What's good, YouTube? And welcome to the other side of the market that I think we should highlight just a little bit more. What happens sometimes after a buyout? Sometimes there's double, triple down buyouts, and I wanted to highlight two different cards with where they've headed since one. Here's Spellbound here, and the Secret Rare by far has the best margins, it's the highest rarity, and was originally a hyped card when it came out that did kind of flop on its face. And the question was, will this be good by the time it gets a reprint? And that's kind of where it's starting to see play after it already has a reprint. So these were super cheap, and we have a YCS Pro doing good with them, and they spike on up. But what's happening? That's the three-month graph. It is coming down very fast. So the winners were the people who already had this on hand, and now everybody who's ordered it gets it. And what was their intention by ordering it? Probably to sell it, overplay it, and they all start competing with each other very quickly. And now you see all the way down towards $6 at a play set and a lot in the $7 range before it's towards eight barely on the front page when it was selling for 10 to 11 on the buyout and you can even see some recent sales did manage to hit 10 maybe they know that seller they're comfortable with them but a lot of these are going in that lower and lower range despite it still being just as viable people are a little more prepared and then the ultra rare is still up so they're both still up versus where the buyout happened in the hype people are still making money to a degree and being from a most recent megaton where people don't necessarily want rip open the Megaton actually gives us a little bit more versus the quantities that usually would be there for a Megaton card. So there's only two printings on this card, which that does help it even if it is a recent printing. I feel like with cards like this, you do have to assess though how much of it is hype and how much will actually be played versus what was bought just to resell. Then you also have Proxy F Magician, which does have some interesting text, but two of its versions are common and it got an OTS, so a tournament pack super upgrade in OTS 15, which is starting to get up there in age. I know we're all so old as Duelist, but look at this. It's graph actually is interesting because it had a huge buy out before and by huge I mean going from almost nothing bulkish supers from tournament packs to three something dollars and crashing out the same way but what's happening it's hit a bottom people are starting to remember the wacky tags the cool things it can do maybe with new decks coming out or a tech here or there it started to go back up a little bit here and people are starting to buy in again to hopefully have some before hype pops up at the cheaper price, right? Let's read this. During your main phase, you can fusion summon one fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from your field as a fusion material. So everything has to be summoned there. It's still a bit specific in terms of getting your fusion summon off. If a fusion summon monster or monsters is fusion summoned to a zone or zones this card points to, you can special summon a monster with a thousand or less attack from your hand. You can only use each effect of Proxy F Magician once per turn. This is very generic for a cyverse monster it takes any two effect monsters and it doesn't cyverse lock you in and it's it's an extender which is very very rare for a cyverse monster like this to do all this and that's probably because it's dipping into the other fusion mechanic rather than just linking you up all turn i think it's really cool on paper i think it ends up seeming like that but it's not for all fusion decks it's for the fusion decks that can throw things out on the field and then not get fusion locked and end up going it's still specific even if it reads really cool on paper but it can find its way into metagames i don't blame people for stocking up on a tournament pack super version of it when there's commons for everybody but you do have to ask yourself what's the ceiling on just a super rare and an ots pack it's not like the old school tournament pack supers where they're extremely hard to get and then the commons are very very available you have to really ask yourself where is the ceiling what am i buying into if it gets bought out again versus its old graph where is the ceiling if this gets all the hype versus a card that you only have two different places to get it and people don't want to open those mega tens i gotta say though with the entire market i feel like i just keep looking back and going forward to the 25th anniversary rarity collection and looking at all my calls saying how is this going to turn out and i find myself so hopium copium hyped about this set that it does make a lot of other things to me not as shiny on the market despite all the changes through the last couple of weeks where it's just two to three market watches worth of information rarity collection has a lot of my attention and that timer is coming soon it's going to be launching ots dates november 1st which means 
pre-sales as long as we're getting you know youtuber leaks and that kind of stuff and the entire set list it'll be interesting to watch and i do wonder if konami will throw curveballs like maybe the ocg ghost nibiru like the ocg one it would be interesting to see where konami is going to go with this set and if there are any last minute ones but i'm not holding my breath it's an amazing product as is this just has a ton of my attention and i don't think i've ever been like this like ready for a product to hit versus the other changes just kind of seeming dull to me on the market like age of overlord pre-sales oh boy we're pre-sale locked here these aren't real changes we're waiting till friday i am interested to see where the first weekend of competition goes and when all the vendors sit down monday through wednesday and actually get to listing everything out how such a hype set for the actual competition will go versus you know this is a rarity collection it's cards we already have they're not introducing things most likely so this is the change to our metagame i should probably be more excited for this but at the same time rarity collection just grips me in a way i guess that other sets don't necessarily like oh boy magicians of bond and unity quarter century rare they didn't even bother to update the art to the yellow one it's the same as they had for the dueling nexus the dueling nexus is the first in the line it's cheaper than the lock pre-sale here i i just can't really get hyped during the pre-sale range i get a little more interested when it's unlock to everybody right and then we go through here and there's changes oh another buyout for the red dragon archfiend stuff what a surprise tyrant red dragon archfiend gets targeted now only two printings oh only two printings dark illusion and a duelist pack and both are in ultra rare and i believe it's like kind of limited in what this actually does people are saying it's another thing you can go into besides dispater but i think dispater is really good must be synchro summon cannot be special summon by other ways you can only use each of these effects once per turn during your main phase one you can destroy all other cards on the field also for the rest of the turn other monsters you control can't attack so you're limited to 3500 damage unless you're cheesing this up somehow then during either player's battle phase when a spell slash trap card is activated not even monster effect you can negate the activation and if you do destroy that card and if you do this gains 500 its negation is limited it's also a bit of a board breaker it is you know interesting but it's all other cards on the field that includes yours as well so i find this a bit niche maybe it's the two printings maybe it actually does have a place as like okay i'm pretty desperate i've gotten through all this and we're gonna go for it like i do see that it could have a place in the extra deck. let me know your thoughts on this specific card if you're finding yourself playing it but for me i feel like it's a bit situational but situational cards do find their way specifically red dragon archfiend i remember uh the one that like ends up burning right that that found its way into some meta games tg gear zombie because tg's got more support here you can target one tg monster you control special summon this card from your hand then the targeted monster loses a thousand attack you can use this once per turn an extender it's a tuner it's a level one it's a dark it's all good things for tg it's going up lifeless leaf fish actually was bought out to a much higher proportion where it looked ridiculous i think the lowest was seven and you can see here that's where it was and you have listers coming in and undercutting here for its ultra rare version my bad and then it has a common version as well that didn't really knee jerk react to much anything so you had an available version and that's what will hold back the high rarity is all the fish good stuff got announced in the ocg and that's a lot of today's market watch ocg oh my gosh there's ritual beast coming in the hidden arsenal thing look there's our you know one of those buyouts that reacts to art happening we don't even know the cards yet but most of the cards have been good so far they assume they'll keep the ball rolling so yeah ritual beast gaia paleo ultimate rare got bought out ultra rares on low quantities but i did have a suggestion i suppose the secret rare versions of the ritual beast tamers would be kind of good to have on hand they're not you know going to go away from the deck's gameplay most likely depending on the cards that are brought in and it would probably be good to have the secret rares on hand and uh if it is really good these will probably spike pretty well but people went for the highest rarity thing first right but i i do think this wouldn't be a bad penny stonk to have using that tcg player link in the description down below costing you nothing extra support the channel directly for the cards you'd already be buying we also have gen x stuff you know the gen x cards got revealed this last week too there were a lot of memes to the art slash a lot of feels with them and feels equal dollar sometimes gen x alley axel only out of star strike blast getting bought out for its secret rare we have gen 
Gen X controller. This buyout has happened so many times in history, and you can see the lowest R15 and quickly up from there. Undyne DT is up as well. People going pretty ham on the Gen X cards on the market. Uh, in Edison format, core transport unit, so I, maybe other Kokimaru stuff's going crazy. Apparently a little Edison reaction here. It has gone on insane sicko buyout mode here, and there's only one seller left. Goblin Zombie, I know Gage has been on this in Edison. The DT has spiked absolutely mad lad insane, so be aware of that. There is a tournament pack ultra rare, which is one of the higher rarities in speed duels, and if you like speed duel foiling, it's also looking not the most expensive in the world for one of those, and this is their newest tournament pack, but again, I think DT and Secret Rare actually probably look cooler, but I do love Speed Duel technology on the cards and the feel of them. Mistworm has really stonked up. I'm guessing this is for Edison. Let me know in the comment section down below if it's something modern, but I just couldn't necessarily see that being the case. It is pretty good at clearing fields to a degree, but it's only got its four printings overall. Hidden Arsenal Chapter 1. People aren't really begging to open it, but it is still your cheapest option at this point with the others going absolutely wild. So you might want to get that one sooner than later as well. And finally in the Megatons, there's some shifting with the Bestial starting to rise even harder here as the estimated value pull drains from some cards and goes up for others like the collectible that is Blue Eyes Jet Dragon. A lot of people were waiting for a reprint on this and you got to remember Master duelist have come in during this era this is their introduction to blue eyes cards and getting this cheaper was really valuable to them so i could see that continuing to actually go up it's a very nice looking version of the card along with the bestials kind of funny that it's a top five card in the tens considering everything in the tens i've seen things like you know the tcg player article talking about their top 10 sellers and the Therion stuff being in there like regulus and the field spell i believe also for the plant version it's all just so cheap so if you do want to go and penny stonk diving the mega tens are a super great place to do so right now and it's not like they're actually going up in price they're going even down further with a ton of people waiting to touch the sealed on black friday sales but it's interesting how the inside of the set is continuing to perform better and better but the price of the sealed is continuing to go down and down from underperforming despite the pro, pro, pro promo singular doing heavy lifting here with multiple of them above five dollars even if you're only getting one and it's not a guarantee per 10 this is pretty strong actually for promos even rng promos but yeah there are more duds than winners and a lot of other ones continue to go down like exodia was three it's going down further i still think these will maybe age well there's just not the most of them listed and people don't want to bust the tens open necessarily still at the value they're at but the singles because of that are in an interesting place where it's going to create an equilibrium eventually on okay we're going to open for this right or that and it, it is an interesting place for the tends to be in where you continue to see some value go up uh, in other places here but not the most cards above five dollars either thanks for watching today's market watch please subscribe if you haven't already give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy the conversation i love getting into these more in-depth conversations slash theory about the market but there is always going to be a ton of variances you never know what konami is going to reprint when konami is going to reprint and if konami will one for one port the rarity collection i'm still hearing a lot of debating about that when we're so close and every reveal has been the same as the ocg i do wonder if there's a little shake up there but i'm starting to doubt it thanks again for watching today's video